Obviously, it's not overnight. It's taken the better part of two years to get there, and a lot of very fundamental changes in my life and how I approach this sport. And I feel like that's the biggest thing, especially with this second round of having to go through eating disorder treatment again. That is sometimes the hardest thing of being able to say like, okay, there are a lot of things that I have to work on and I almost have to become a fundamentally different person. But putting in that work, I think, is the most important thing, more so than anything else I've ever done in my life. Obviously, I have really big goals in the sport to run fast, to try and win more medals, but I also have to make sure that I'm living the kind of life that I want to live and that I'm a healthy person and I'm there for the people around me. And I needed to get those things in order before I can do any of, any of these other goals in the sport. I have to make sure I'm the kind of person that I want to be and living the life I want to live. It is interesting, I think, in some ways. I, I think I'm like, man, I've been in this for so long. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm only 29. I don't really think of it as a year and a half loss. I think it's very easy to see it that way. Of like, yeah, I haven't run a marathon in a year and a half. But where I was after New York in 21, just in kind of the depth of a relapse, and I fiz I couldn't go anywhere from there. I think I saw it in Boston, I was like, yeah, this this just doesn't work anymore. How I've lived the last few years, it's not serving me, and I will never get better than how I am now. And so I think I had to experience this very scary shift of like, man, I have to kind of go into this unknown of like really focusing on healing myself, because if I don't, I'm gonna be out of this sport and I'll never be able to do this again. If I do the work to heal myself, I think you always have the eating disorder in the back of your brain saying, if you don't have this, you're never gonna be good again. And it's confronting that fear of just like, yeah, I don't know who I'm gonna be on the other side of this, but I could be better. And it's a chance that I have to take. Definitely feeling like that combination of confidence and like a little bit of terror of just like when you shoot for something that's faster than you've gone before, knowing that I'm confident in the training that I've been doing, it's been a really solid build, but it, the pace group that I'm going for is also two and a half minutes faster than I've ever run before. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and going to be a little bit of the like put on the big girl pants and just go. Honestly, success is going out and just being able to feel like I ran all 26.2 miles, like really strong, not fading in the second half, hopefully trying to build in strength and trying to get a little bit faster and just work on getting back into that swing of feeling competitive again. I know there's going to be, the front end of the race is going to be insanely fast, but just being able to compartmentalize and know that I have to go out and execute and prepare myself for what's coming in February for our trials. Tina and Joan are here. Do you have a secret handshake? Oh, God, I wish. And when I'm, I still, like, fangirl over Tina so hard every time I see her. I saw her, like, coming out of the elevator. And I try to be chill because I'm like, okay, we're peers. We're, like, kind of, like, I still can't see myself. <laughs> I'm always going to be like my fourth grade self watching her on TV in Athens and I don't think that's ever going to go away and I think that's kind of going to be how it is and same thing with Joan. I just feel like, yeah, I, Joni will always be on a pedestal for me. That's never going to change.